Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, December 26th, 2018. I hope everyone had a great Christmas for those of you who celebrate. If not, I just hope you had a really good uh, Tuesday. I did take the day off from morning coffee just because I wanted a break. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. This is going to be a general energy reading. Please excuse me. My hands are a little dry. I got to put some lotion on. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, December 26th. Uh, this is not specific to anything, love, career, uh, specific sign. This is just what spirit would like to speak with us about today. And I do feel like this could be a bit of a recap from yesterday, from the 25th as well, since we didn't have a daily reading then. Spirit is, all, is already um, showing me that this is going to be a combination of some energies or some mes messages from the 25th and also uh, some messages for the 26th, okay? So I guess, I don't know, it's not like a bonus or a double. It's just, you know, maybe making up for lost time. I guess you can see it that way. Um, what else? Oh, just a quick, quick info. Um, I was able to get the 2019 six-month forecasts finished yesterday, uh, one for each sign. So that is going to be posted um Later on today, as soon as I finish doing this video, I'm going to go in and do some editing for the rest of the, the 2019 videos, and that will be up, should be up uh, before noon today, December 26th. Um, also, I still have the 20% off sale going on. That is going on until midnight on the 31st. So if you would like a reading, a personal reading done before the end of the year, you do have the option of taking advantage of that 20% off sale. All readings are 20% off, except for the single question readings, which are discounted during happy hour, which I am most likely going to hold a session of happy hour tonight, if you guys are interested. So keep an, uh, uh, keep an eye open for that. Uh, I am going to make an official announcement later on in the day, should my schedule uh, lend for time for it, yes? All right, guys, so without further ado, Let's get into the messages for today, yes? Actually, let me put this here. There we go. All right, guys. Let's do it. Mm. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For today, Wednesday, December 26th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, everyone. So let's get going. It's so crazy that the year is coming to an end. Um, it's funny because as I was praying, actually, uh, over the, the deck just now, I was thinking about how we're almost at the end of the year. And we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the start of Divine Conversations. I started it in January of this year of 2018. Uh, officially January 8th is when I started the channel. And we're coming up on the one year anniversary of when I started doing personal readings. It was December 31st. It was around midnight that I had actually started it. So it was like on the cusp. <laughs> it was on the cusp of the 31st and the 1st of January that I had started doing readings. I think it was maybe like 20 minutes before midnight before I started, I did the first reading. Um, Cause we had to stop in the middle of it to do the countdown. So that was just, that's just really cool. It's, it's really cool. All right, one more shuffle. Wednesday, December 26th. Let's see what we've got for us today, guys. OK. 
Okay, we've got the Five of Wands, Chaos, Confusion, the Four of Wands, okay, ooh, wait, we're not going to take those, I didn't mean to drop those, okay, okay, Wednesday, December 26th, Ten of Pentacles, King of Wands, the Devil, all right. Underneath the deck, you have the Two of Pentacles. So we're gonna we're working on keeping things in balance here. Now, um, you have the Five of Wands, the Four of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the King of Wands, the Devil, the Hanged Man, and the Eight of Swords in reverse. Well, that's really good. That's very, very good. So I'm really seeing an energy of um, facing your fears. Do you see how the King of Wands? Uh, you see how the King of Wands is staring right at the Devil here, and the Devil is in between the King of Wands and the Hanged Man. Okay, uh, so this is all like I, normally. I, if a lot of you have been following for some time, and you know that, or you've probably come uh, deduced. <laughs> deduced, I love that word, um, that sometimes I'll split the rows into different people. But today, this feels like the energy of one person or one situation. This is not, this is just singular. All right. Um, there's chaos surrounding you or this person here with the five of wands. But this chaos has more to do with the outside world than it does to do with what's going on internally with this person, okay? The King of Wands here is very stable, very secure, knows exactly who he is and knows exactly who he wants. Well, or, well, yeah, okay, you could say who he wants or what he wants. Now, um, this could be anybody, all right? This is just the masculine energies within. So many of you are already aware that I'm a bit of a twin flame guide, okay? So we don't have to be just talking about the divine masculine here. We could be talking about, now, if you resonate with the twin flame situation, you could be of the divine feminine nature and, um, or be like the divine feminine in the situation and still resonate with this because there has been a lot of energy of, um, yeah resonating with the divine masculine uh the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming into balance within us so this could be your divine masculine energies within you that you that we're speaking of here it also could be your divine masculine but i just I, for some reason that's like not really the focus um and actually come to think of it Moving forward in the new year, there are going to be some shifts in my readings when it comes to the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine or the Twin Flame situation, but we'll get into that later. But um, this is more about the Divine Masculine energies, okay? So uh, yeah, Spirit is wanting me to say that this is more than just potentially your Divine Masculine in the outside world. Um, if you resonate with the Twin Flame journey, this is more about the Divine Masculine energies within, okay? Now, uh, if you don't resonate with the Twin Flame situation, if like that's not your thing, then don't worry about it, okay? This still could be something that's going on with you because whether you're a Twin Flame or not, we all have these Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine energies within. We are all divine, regardless of how you like to label yourself or what... Um, uh, what labels you resonate with, that, that whatever, like whatever. <laughs> it's just a label anyway. Um, okay, so but back to the reading. We have this chaos in the outside world, but you see within you have this four of wands here. So you have a somebody, either you or somebody else that you're connecting with maybe, but you have a solid foundation within, a very solid foundation, uh, one that actually, <laughs> is more solid than what these people have to say with the Five of Wands. 
Um, I really feel like the energies of the Five of Wands, anyone that would resonate more with the energies of, of the Five of Wands rather than the Four of Wands would be swayable, would be the type of people that would just go along with the flock, with the um, hive mentality in a sense. Instead of, they're not really free thinkers, they're more of collective thinkers. Um, they do what... Basically, they do what everyone else does. It's the flock. And I'm not trying to say that's a bad thing. Um, but here, in this situation, it is not serving this person, this king of wands. Okay? Now, you have the ten of pentacles here. So, longevity is the name of the game here. It's like you've almost, it's almost like you're built or this person is built to strive, to survive, to move forward regardless of what... I'm just going to say it because this is how I normally, I stopped, I stopped using this word because it offended some people. I personally don't find it offensive. I am black. I mean, what, you know, so, I mean, I don't find this offensive. I never found it offensive this way, but this, the five of wands, this is my peanut gallery card. All right. And so, and I use that specifically because this is energies of people from the outside world, um, opinions from people in the outside world that are unsolicited, quite frankly, in regards, it's according to this person here, okay, this king of wands. So in the middle of this here, you have the devil with the hanged man and the king of wands. The devil, I believe, is directly connected to this five of wands energy here. This is what these people on the five of wands that resonate with the five of wands energy are, are moving off of, this devil energy codependency, um, needing, needing validation within, in what they're experiencing from the outside world in order for it to feel right to them in some way. And then you have the hanged man. Now, the devil is in between the hanged man and the king of wands. And so it's almost as if this person here with this king of wands energy has been put in this situation specifically so that he or she can learn can become enlightened, can find enlightenment in some way through rising above the hive mentality, uh, the devil and the five of wands, okay? This could be family for you guys. I mean, we have the four of wands and the 10 of pentacles. The four of wands talks about a... Um, you know, a, a foundation. It's celebratory energy because it's like you've achieved something. You've achieved a great foundation. But like I've been saying recently, um, it's not a time to really rest on your laurels. Yes, you can take some time and celebrate and have fun and revel in your your victory, your new level, your new foundation, whatever, but you still have work to do. There's still work to be done. This is more of a milestone than an end game situation, right? Um, Four of Wands can speak to the home that you live in, um, and the Ten of Pentacles can speak to family. But what I'm really getting with this is longevity. Well, both of the cards, the Four of Wands and the Ten of Pentacles, can speak of longevity, uh, family and longevity. But the Ten of Pentacles is what it is the long-term investment. And I'm just getting a long life expectancy <laughs> with the Ten of Pentacles. Um, okay. Now, at the bottom of all of this, you have the Eight of Swords in reverse. So it's like someone is finally releasing themselves from this mental prison. And actually, it's this mental prison that these people find themselves in, connected to the devil, right? The Five of Wands and the devil here. But this person, who is the King of Wands, a torchbearer, a light worker potentially, has broken free from this prison or is in the process of breaking free from this prison. This could be, in, in, in speaking of the hive mentality, this could be um, someone releasing, I wanna say family dogma, the family narrative, potentially, for some of you. For some of us, for, for others of you, this could be societal in nature. 
the same old, same old, the same old story. It's like you don't have to follow in the footsteps of your ancestors or your mother, father, whatever, your predecessors, should you choose not to. Now, it does, it is going to take recognizing the cycle, seeing the cycle and breaking yourself free from it. So, so it's really quite important or poignant here that the King of Wands is staring directly at the devil. For many of you, you're facing your fears staring directly at the devil and basically at the hanged man who's just past the devil. Because once you see past the devil, once you can see through the illusions that the devil likes to throw in people's faces in order to create fear, you gain enlightenment. You see things clearer, or at least you see things from a different perspective, and that changes everything for you and will only solidify your foundation with the four of wands here okay now underneath the deck you do have the two of pentacles so it's still it's still a balancing game you're still kind of juggling because it's almost as if especially with this hanged man energy it's almost as if you're in or you're entering or approaching a limbo of sorts it's like you're in between worlds. You haven't quite left this world behind, the devil and the five of wands, okay? But you, you haven't quite left that behind and you haven't quite crossed into the next phase. You're in some sort of limbo. And it feels like you're gonna have to be for a little bit, for some time, maybe. It's almost as if, it's almost as if the two of pentacles is an energy of playing along to a certain extent. Like literally only playing along as much as you absolutely have to. Okay. Wow, that's really interesting. So I'm trying to see how I wanna clarify this today. I think I want to start with the Five of Wands. Yeah, it's okay. We're going to get some clarification now. And I want to start with the Five of Wands. Because it's almost like I almost... F I feel compassion, we'll say. For the people that still resonate with the Five of Wands energy, this hive mentality. Now, there is a sort of collective mentality. There's always going to be a collective mentality. But when, we, when, I, when I speak of the hive mentality, it's not the best thing. Because it's not like it's a hive or a society of free thinkers. That would be completely different. There's always going to be some sort of collective consciousness, collective mind, collective understanding. But that collective understanding is enhanced when it is filled or um, supplied by a collective of free thinkers, people that think for themselves, that aren't afraid to go in their own direction mentally in order to explore and gain more understanding to bring that back to the collective. Does that make sense? So when I'm speaking of this five of wands or collective and a, 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 a hive mentality here, I'm picking up on people that just follow instead of doing their own investigating. Okay, so let's get some clarification here. And it is out of fear that they would, it is out of, yeah, definitely fear, the devil energy, seven of pentacles. Ooh. Okay. Look at that. All right, yeah, see, underneath the deck, we have the three of wands, I'm sorry, the three of swords, and we have the hanged man that came out, the seven of pentacles, the four of swords, the emperor, and the six of swords. Excellent. 
all right underneath is the three of swords so this is definitely some sort of heartbreaking energy and what i'm getting in this in this heartbreak um when you don't think for yourself you basically break your own heart you basically abandon yourself You have the Hanged Man, which came out with the Four of Swords. And these are very similar energies. I do like to say that the Four of Swords is like the minor arcana of the Hanged Man. And so I'm, what I'm getting with this is someone really took some time. Is I really feel like someone is emerging from a period of suspension where it was, it was almost like they were forced to accept some sort of thought process, belief system, and now they really took their time and, and that was heartbreaking to them because it went against who they truly are. And so as someone took some time to think about this, to experience this mentality, to experience this reality, it brought them a bit of enlightenment because they began to see through the situation seven of pentacles they started to see or you have the potential to see how this continues to perpetuate itself how this is a almost a self-fulfilling prophecy how you have to change the way you view things in order to change the harvest you have to change the seeds you plant you have to change the way you nurture those seeds into what uh, so that they grow into something to change the harvest that you get from it and so we have someone who's taking their power back here with the emperor and is moving forward with the Six of Swords. And this is mental healing. There's a lot of healing happening mentally here. You went from the Three of Swords to the Four of Swords, and then you jumped straight over the Five to the Six. No more conflict here. No more, no more self-defeating energy. No more twisted masculinity. Sometimes it can, uh, the Five of Swords can, can um, resemble that, at least in my opinion. No more lose-lose situations. Just moving forward. All right? That's pretty beautiful. Next, I want to... I want to clarify the Four of Wands here. Please, Spirit. Okay. Looks like we have the world. King of Cups. Whoa, 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 whoa there. Yep, we sure do have the world. Underneath the deck, we have the Seven of Wands. Boundaries. And, and these are healthy boundaries because they allow you to be who you are. You have the Page of Swords, the Page of Wands, the Five of Cups. We have the world. Woo! Wow. Okay. So we've got the world, uh, uh, the world and judgment. Okay, we've got the six of wands, the eight of wands, and the king of cups. Not the eight of cups. I'm sorry, the king of cups. So I'm looking at this here. <laughs> There's a lot of progressive energy here. Six of wands, seven of wands, eight of wands. That's really cool. But I'm looking at this page of, sword, page of wands and page of swords with the five of cups, and I'm trying to decide. I really feel like this is the person that's, or the energies that are staying within this hive mentality. It's almost as if losing you or watching you move on is inspiring others to do the same is potentially could be um i mean you going in your own path could be inspiring others to go in their own path on their own path you have someone who and now this is keep in mind this is um clarifying the four of wands here so you have the world and you have judgment you have more progression 
from judgment to the world. Judgment is card number 20. The world is the very last card in the major arcana, number 21. From the world, you hit the fool. Wow. Guys, this is pretty amazing. I mean, you have six, seven, and eight of wands right here, and then you have judgment to the world, which then brings you emotional maturity, king of cups. And this is extreme. This is a lot of compassion here. This is someone that really recognizes, sees the, the, the word I'm hearing is fault, but I don't want to place blame. It's not, uh, it's not anybody's fault. It's not about being at fault. It's about learning, learning from learning the dangers of learning, experiencing the dangers of sticking to a strict hive mentality instead of thinking for oneself and bringing that information to the collective mind so that everybody can benefit from it. Yes, there are going to be situations in which we all need to come to some sort of agreement, but that doesn't mean that you can't think for yourself. That doesn't mean that you can't be a free thinker. And when you... Wow, so this person has hit, has heard the call, judgment, has heard the call and put an end to the process, is completing the process, okay? They are becoming victorious, six of wands, by putting boundaries in place, greater boundaries in place, seven of wands, and this could be someone, you know, this is really someone breaking the mold. Now, those six wands that are coming after that person uh, are the, oppos the opposition. Those that don't, wouldn't necessarily want you to think freely. Wouldn't want you to break away from the hive mentality. Because in all honesty, if you were to, or should you do that, you basically threaten others and their, their mindset. And it's really not even about that. But that's just your pride and your ego speaking, should you be threatened by something like that, okay? Then you have communication. Either it's communication, so you're either sharing your vision, sharing your point of view, or you're just moving forward because you have a goal in mind. You have a direction that you want to move in. So now you're going. You're moving forward and ain't nobody going to stop you. And you have this emotional maturity with the King of Cups. But this is compassion as well. So it's not even like you're moving forward with pride and ego saying, oh, well, I'm, I guess I'm just better than you or I'm more intelligent. No, it's not even like that. You see through the illusion. You see through the lies. And you can't really, you can't in good faith stay there anymore but you understand why others are still there. So you compassionately move forward and they're watching you do so. Whoever, whatever you're breaking free from, they're watching you do so. And with the Five of Cups here, you have the Page of Swords, the Page of Wands and the Five of Cups. So they're watching you, you're inspiring them, but also they're starting to feel a bit of remorse with the Five of Cups. And it's interesting because the, the symbology that I'm seeing here, that I'm getting with the Five of Cups is there are usually three cups that are spilled and there are still two cups that are full, right? Well, those three cups here would represent the hive mentality, the hive mind, or the social aspect, society, right? Those three cups are spilled. It's almost as if that, that's now gone sour or gone rotten, whatever was in those cups. But you still have those two cups left. The two cups being the, the, the balance between masculine and feminine within you. You still have your own self available for nurturing. You can still learn, you can still reconnect with yourself. Mm. Okay, the last thing I want to clarify is the devil here. Please, spirit. 
Ooh. Okay. That's good. And what do we have here? We there look at that, you guys. There's that two of cups I was just talking about. Underneath the deck is the Ten of Wands. And what I'm getting from the Ten of Wands in clarifying, in this clarifying the devil, part of clarifying the devil, it's like the devil has been putting these burdens upon you so that you are not, so that you don't have the energy to carry, you don't have the energy to fight back, basically. Let's bog these people down, weigh them down so that they have to rely on my knowledge or my say so or my instruction or my wisdom. And I'm not trying to bash anybody's right to free will or, free, uh, or wisdom or whatnot. It's just, that's manipulative. That's controlling. Mm-hmm. You have the Ten of Cups, the Hermit, the Three of Wands, the Two of Cups, and also the Nine of Swords. So it's, it's finding union within, with the Two of Cups here. It's finding union within that, oh, and the Hermit, and finding your own inner light. It's through coming into balance within yourself, finding your own inner light, finding your own inner truth is the real phrase, is the, 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 the strongest phrase here. Finding your own inner truth will allow you to release and let go of this, these burdens with the Ten of Wands, okay? Um, and many of us have been doing that. There is still some fear and anxiety surrounding it. That makes sense. But this was the one card that, well, I just feel like, I don't remember exactly if this was the one card that fell face down, but the fact that it was face down really stuck out to me. It was the last card that I turned over. So there is still some, there, there are some, so, still some lingering fears, anxieties, but that's like the last throws of this devil energy trying to keep its grip on you, right? I really feel like, especially with it being the last card that I turned over to be face up, um, I really feel like you're really letting go of this. In most cases, you're not even paying attention to it anymore. And if you are, it's that it's like a, the last little inklings of that in your mind that you're releasing because you're on your way here to the Ten of Cups. And lately I've been seeing the Three of Wands here as the journey. Especially because look at it, look at how it's depicted in this deck. You, you know, you have that path. You have this person shining a light. And you're on your path, the path towards the Ten of Cups, your ultimate wish fulfillment. This could be family goals. The Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups, they have been coming out a lot together recently. It's really beautiful, guys. All right, so with that said, let's get into the oracle section now. Yeah, and we're going to close the reading with Lightworker Oracle today. shuffle all righty guys here we go best message please spirit for today december 26th mm, fire ant oh boy 
That sure is a lot. Take him. Underneath the deck is Scorpion. I'm going to read these right side up. Tiger, Lamb, Fire Ant, Earthworm, and Tarantula. So Fire Ant is this Five of Wands energy. Okay. Um, and... Wow. This is intense, you guys. So fire, fire ant is the, the is the the five of wands energy. This is the conflict. This is the fiery energy. This is the gossiping and stuff like that. Um, the the key phrase, the key to the fire ant is re recognizing and acknowledging the fact that something is bothering you. Okay, this is not the time to just sweep it under the rug. This is the time to recognize it and heal it, deal with it. And what you have here is the lamb. This is a very delicate creature. This is like, it's almost like this is your inner child or an inner sense of innocence that's coming through and saying, no, it does not have to be this way. The tiger speaks to the feminine energies of intuition, right? It's like intuitively you're knowing something is wrong or something is not right. And you have scorpion and tarantula here that are here to teach you something. I'm seeing fires of transformation or transmutation between scorpion and tarantula. And then you have earthworm. So it's like you're starting on a brand new path, a brand new journey. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, says the earthworm. You're brand new. You're, you're new to something. And this is... Uh, it's this is like this is like groundbreaking energy which is so it's so funny that it came through that way with earthworm because literally the earthworm digs into the earth and almost like tills the earth tills the soil fertilizes the soil for new growth for new expansion um I don't really want to read all of these. <laughs> yes, you do, says Spirit. <laughs> We're going to read Scorpion. Actually, you know what? I'm going to read all the fire. That's a lot of fire. That's all but two cards. It's all fire and earth here. We're going to read Scorpion, Tiger, and Tarantula. Scorpion. Okay. Scorpion is first. Passionate, competitive, tends towards isolation. The scorpion is a passionate and determined creature. Their career is very important to them, as are a few select friends. Sometimes the scorpion's heat festers and they focus on an unresolved event from the past, usually a situation where they were left feeling, quote, burned. The scorpion card says it's time to come clean about your feelings so everyone can heal and you can get back to your usual fiery but fun self. When in balance, scorpion is wild and free and fierce. When out of balance, scorpion is jealous, resentful, and has unresolved issues. To bring into balance, one must practice honesty and forgiveness. Next we have, which is next, which tarantula at a crossroad. Claiming life's purpose. The tarantula represents a moment when a great decision must be made. It involves prioritizing your life's deeper purpose, purpose or dharma. A habit or routine from the past is sidetracking you from your dream, yet a voice inside keeps begging you to refocus your attention. In order to find true happiness, you must choose dharma. Until you do, satisfaction will be fleeting. The tarantula hovers, patient and calm, like an old friend that knows your inner soul. It already knows you'll choose wisely. When in balance, Tarantula follows the intuition. When out of balance, Tarantula hesitates and over-intellectualizes. To bring into balance, one must practice some daily journaling. We have Tiger. I'm going to read Tiger, and then finally, I'm going to... Okay, well, I'll probably end up reading all of them. <laughs> we have Tiger. Lunar Force, Ease in Darkness, Feminine Energy. The tiger hunts at night, at one with the silence, fearing nothing. 
This card reminds us to take in the wild darkness, to allow the lunar forces to soothe and heal our spirits. Sensuality, receptivity, and devotion are all heightened in the midnight hour, and the tiger takes advantage of these boons. Spend some time in silence this evening, drinking in the potent calm. There is nothing to fear in the stillness except the awakening of your own power. When in balance, tiger is passionate, strong, and sensual. When out of balance, tiger is overstimulated. To bring into balance, one can practice candle gazing. All right, fine. I'm gonna <laughs> uh, spirits laughing at me because they were like, see, we told you you wanted to read all of them. Here we go. Fire ant. <laughs> Aggression. Rigid thinking. Following orders. Fire ant energy flares up without us noticing. It's the force that attracts us to people and situations that feed our imbalances rather than those that counter them. Gossiping and blaming are a few indicators that misaligned fire ant energy is at play. You may also find yourself, quote, stewing on a person or situation, only making things worse. How can you break free from the dharma and cool down? I'm sorry, from the drama and cool down? Fire ants are surprisingly sensitive. Don't pretend the heat isn't getting to you. When in balance, fire ant is thoughtful and disciplined. When out of balance, fire ant argues, it experiences excessive heat or gossips. To bring into balance, one must take some solo time or maybe a walk at night. And finally, we, oh no, not finally, we have two more. We have earthworm and lamb. Earthworm. Shy, hesitant, reluctant to share inner vision. We all have felt the woes of the earthworm at some point along the way. The earthworm indicates a newbie or novice working to establish confidence in a new field. Others around you may seem wise and experienced, but it's important to remember they once felt earthworm energy too. This card is a reminder not to be intimidated or lose hope. Mastery takes time and you're on the right track. Besides, rumor has it that a beginner's mind offers the most valuable insights. When in balance, earthworm is earnest, intelligent, and valuable. When out of balance, earthworm is self-conscious and apprehensive. To bring into balance, one must speak up or risk embarrassment. And finally, we have lamb. There we are. Lamb. Peaceful, prophetic, patient. The lamb is the bearer of an important message. Its contents can only be heard when a deep level of quiet has been established. Lamb energy is the honest guidance you hear from an old friend, a young child, or sometimes a surprising stranger. Though the lamb's message may channel through another person, the wisdom resonates within you. It will repeat and reverberate until you listen. Approach this gentle creature with utmost patience and reverence. Truth is a gift. Sit still, listen, and receive. When in balance, lamb has a knowingness and inner peace. When out of balance, lamb is quiet, timid, and concerned. To bring into balance, one must do some meditation or just practice listening. Look, guys, there is definitely an energy of embarking on something brand new, a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of thinking. And it's led by this King of Wands energy. And the funny thing about this is the King of Wands is a fixed energy. OK, this is not a cardinal energy like the Queen of Wands. And you would think logically you'd say, OK, well, it would be a cardinal energy that would want to do this. But no, it's not. It's a fixed energy. It's because of the fixed nature that this actually kind of makes this ideal. Because when a fixed sign really takes hold of change, embraces change, they can really do a lot of good. I want to say they can do a lot of damage because of the force that they have in their fixed nature. It's like I'm seeing, this is totally intuitive. This is totally just how I'm seeing this, but it's like they are so forceful in their fixed nature that it's like a pile driver. Um, you know those, those big machines that till the soil oh okay so what i'm seeing is like in the old days when when farmers were tilling the soil and they were creating the channels for their crops and they had like an ox connected to this thing that was like a like a, a 
a triangular shape that would cut basically a groove in the earth. That's what I'm seeing here. I don't know what that would be called, but that's what I'm seeing with this King of Wands energy, just completely cutting through everything. Because when a fixed energy wants change, man, they make it. Cardinal energies make change all the time, so it's really nothing new. But when a fixed energy does it, woo chow, you've got a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> all right, let's get a closing message here. Closing message from the Lightworker Oracle. All right, guys, here we go. One message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading. For today, Wednesday, December 26th, we have Third Ray of Creative Intelligence. My, my, my. Isn't that a sight for sore eyes, says Spirit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's see what this says. Now, this is card number three. The third ray of creative intelligence brings the gift of practical spirituality and develops the talent for grounding inspired creativity into the world. It empowers your manifestation. And I just saw a 45, 55 on the counter, so that's four and a five, five, five. Boop. This ray brings many gifts, including new ideas and the practical support needed to bring them to life the ability to organize, make connections and networks and synthesize information from various sources into one coherent whole. Archangel Shamuel helps you receive this gift from the universe with love and intelligence. I do wanna see if there's more to read here. The third ray of creative intelligence will help you gain practically, practicality to organize and manifest an idea or vision into the world. It gives you the drive and the means to implant, implement your plans. When this ray is active in our lives, we want to take action, bring something to life, not just to know or feel, but to do. Hello, hello, King of Wands energy. With this oracle comes a message about taking action <laughs> and believing that even the most inspired or spiritual ideas can have practical purpose in the world. Your visions and ideas can and should be worked with so they can manifest. I mean, come on, guys. You must believe in your capability and competence, your confidence and practical, down-to-earth common sense, even if these are not always your strongest qualities. If you doubt your ability to achieve all that you dream of, remember that sometimes the universe puts dreams in our hearts to help us develop strengths that are dormant within us. This can bring to life a whole slew of abilities and talents we didn't know we had. We are given nudges in life to discover what we are made of, what uh, uh, which can be so much more than we might have initially believed. The challenge with this ray is to take it one step at a time. Allow the universe to help you find the patience, persistence, and sense of humor that will help you stick to the process of creation. Do not try to do too much at once, nor allow your project to get too complicated. Above all, do not give up before you have finally brought your inner light to life in the world. Archangel Shamuel brings the gift of reclaiming lost energy, ideas, or talents that can help you fulfill your divine potential. This Archangel helps you reawaken talents from this or other lifetimes that may have been cast aside. Perhaps your intuitive healing energy was put to one side as you studied or tended to family responsibilities. Perhaps your business sense or your ability to market yourself in a soulful and loving way is yet to be discovered. Maybe an ability to teach or be, or excuse me, to teach or the clear, confident voice of a writer is within you, waiting to be developed. This archangel will help you find and apply with loving confidence whatever talents and abilities are required to turn your aspirations into manifestations, and that is Archangel Shamuel. As this ray has a special connection with business, you are asked to remain open to learning and growing through financial success. 
This ray can help heal the tension that, may, that many feel between spirituality and financial abundance. It helps us recognize that the spirit feels joy in successful physical world endeavors, or particularly those that serve love. When a situation is a win-win for all involved, there is no reason at all to hold back from material success. It can be celebrated and enjoyed whilst you maintain the true motivation for the work, which is love. That's excellent, guys. That's really, really beautiful. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, I wish you all a beautiful Wednesday. And uh, for those of you that are on winter break, please enjoy. I hope you're having a great time. And uh, look out for the 2019 six month forecasts. Those are going to be released later on today. And I wish you all the best. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon, um, potentially for happy hour tonight. Are you okay? Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Mwah! Bye.